All right, now for number five, we have that. The ticket prices for a concert are showing in the following table. Here is the table. Okay. So they tell us that the ticket type for adult has this price, for children has this price, for student has this price. Then they tell us three pieces, of, three pieces of information. The total amount of tickets, the total amount of money. So we have total tickets, total money, and also that, lastly, there were twice as many adult tickets sold as child tickets. It tells us that we need to let the number of adult tickets sold be X, the number of child tickets sold be Y, and the number of student tickets to sold to be Z. For part A, we need to write down three equations that express the information given. For part B, find the number of each type of ticket sold. All right, so I'm sure some of you are like, dude, what the fuck is going on? All right, check it. So this right here, the big challenge, okay, is identifying what equations you can do, see? And so you will quickly realize this has to do with a system of equations, okay? What am I talking about when I say a system of equations? Let's say you have, I don't know, x plus y equals 2, and then on another side you have whatever, uh, 3x plus 2y equals 9. I'm just making this up, okay? And you have the system of equations. And I tell you find the values of x and y. Okay, first of all, you can find them because your number of variables is equal to your number of equations, see? So you have two equations, but two variables, okay? You're good to go. And so here, and this might start ringing a bell now, you have substitution or elimination, okay? If, you, if you're not sure what that is, don't worry, I'm about to show you, okay? But this is sort of like the world we're in right now, just so that we get situated on what's going on. The big challenge here for these type of word problems, I think, is defining, well, what type of equation you can get, okay? And so forget for a second, like, where x should go, where y should go, and like, what number should be next to it, and all that shit. No, no, no. Think a little bit more about the context, okay? So what information do I have? On one side, I have information regarding price. See? And so this guy, I mean, this whole table is price, ¿cierto? And here, I can make an equation based on this for... Yeah, it would be like price or like earnings. See, price and earnings would be the one in the middle. The one up top has strictly to do with amount, okay? It has nothing to do with price. And the one on the bottom also has to do a little bit with amount, okay? And so if you start thinking about it that way, you can have like a better sort of approach to what is going on, okay? So this isn't random information. The first one has to do only with amount, nothing with price. The second one has everything to do with price and amount. And the last one has only to do with amount. My variables, what are my variables? My variables, are they in price? Are they in amount? What's going on? This is all number of tickets sold. Number of tickets sold. Number of tickets sold. So this is also all in amount, okay? So X, Y, and Z is an amount. It is not a price. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So for this first equation, okay, for this first equation, using this information here, total of 600 tickets were sold. Since X, Y, and Z are all amount of tickets, that means that all my adult tickets plus all my child tickets plus all my student tickets has to equal 600. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, right? What else can we do? Well, for the second one, we have that the total amount of money from ticket sales was 7,860. So a lot of people, what they do here, which is a common mistake, which is a, I'm about to show you, is that they say, okay, X plus Y plus Z has to equal 7,860. Okay, why is that a mistake? Take a second, think about it. It's a mistake because X, Y, and Z are in amount, see? And so, and since this is earnings of the ticket sales, right? So it's all your tick, all your adult tickets that were sold, plus all your 
child tickets, how much they earned, plus all your student tickets and how much they earned. So, my question to you, ladies and gentlemen, is what is the price of an adult ticket? Aha, uh -huh. the price of an adult ticket is 15. So we have 15x. What is the price of a child ticket? Aha, uh -huh. 10. 10y. What is the price of a student ticket? 12. 12z. So 15x plus 10y plus 12z equals that amount. See? And last but not least, we have that there were twice as many adult tickets sold as child tickets. Okay, this one is a little bit more easy. Since it only has to do with amount, I can write that uh, twice as many adult tickets sold as child tickets. Twice as many adult tickets were sold as child tickets. So, there were more child Blah, blah, blah. There were more adult tickets than child tickets sold. See? There are more adults. That means that I'm going to have x equals 2y. This is where the twice as many comes in. See? Twice as many is right on that too. Twice as many. All right. There I have my three equations. And now I need to solve it. See? Now, as I mentioned earlier, your two main tools are going to be substitution and elimination. Okay? I will first employ substitution. Okay? Because I think it's easiest with my equation that is way down on the bottom. Right? And so here I have my. I'm going to try to be organized, but usually this gets really funky. Okay? So I'm going to write down that this is equation 1, this is equation 2, this is equation 3. So what I'm going to start off by doing, I think would be best, is that we will plug in my third one into my first one. So if I plug in my third one into my first one, I end up with 2y plus y plus z equals 600. So that means that 3y plus z equals 600. All right. Give me a second. The other thing that I would do in line with that, see? So right now I ended up with this guy here. The other thing that I would do is actually do, is plug in my third one into my second one. And now I end up with for my second one, I end up with 15x, and so x is 2y, see, plus 10y, plus 12z, equals 7816. Okay, I'm going to explain in a second why we're doing it this way, okay? So if you're feeling lost and confused, dazed and confused, great song by Led Zeppelin, uh, just hang in there, see? So 15 times 2 is going to give me 30y, plus 10y, plus 12z equals that nasty number, see? I combine like terms, I end up with 40y plus 12z equals 7816. So this is the second thing I end up with. All right, so notice, right now we did something magical. Right, I know I'm a little bit of a math nerd, but believe me, it is, it, something magical is going on, brother, all right? So what's the cool thing that's happening? Initially, these first two up here, is that it? How many variables did I have? Three. The one up top had three. The one in the middle also had three. The one on the bottom had two. So I plugged in this third one into both of the ones on top. How many variables did I end up with? Well, here I ended up with two. And here I ended up with two. And so before, when suddenly it was extremely scary that I had three fucking variables going around, now I only have two. All right, so that is the cool thing about substitution and elimination. It helps you get rid of the amount of variables. Okay, that is your main goal. If you boil it down to just one variable, then you can reach x equals like an actual number. 
see, like x equals 9. Like that, that is the kind of shit you're going for, see? But you can only do that by getting rid of the amount of variables, right? So that is actually the deep, deep purpose, blah, per blah, 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 the deep, deep purpose of substitution and elimination. What it does is that it reduces the amount of variables that you have going around. What we did just now over here is actually substitution. Okay, why? Because he substituted one variable for another. In this case, I no longer have x's, I only have y's. Y's and z's, see? Which was not the case earlier, okay? So that is like the magical thing that is going on. I have less variables than before, see? All because of substitution and elimination. As you can see, they are pretty powerful tools. So the two equations that I have now are, and let me just make a little bit of space, the two equations that I have now are the ones I have boxed in, see? So let me just do it a little more pretty. I have 3y plus z equals 600, and I have 40y plus 12z equals 7816. All right, so when I say leave it more pretty, I think it's convenient to have them aligned one with another. So you can think about your approach. All right, so I just showed you substitution. See, so you plug in one into the other and you kind of like see what happens. Right now, I could keep doing that or I could do elimination. Um, huh, interesting. All right, because I showed you substitution, I will now show you elimination, All right? But you can't solve it through substitution. Like, don't worry about it, All right? So, For elimination, of course, you want to eliminate a variable. See, for substituting, you substitute one for the other. That's sort of how you replace it. For elimination, you literally want to get rid of the other one. See? And so these two equations, you have to think that I'm going to be like sort of adding them. Okay? So you need to add them in a way that one of the variables disappears. And so right now, all my variables are positive. So what I can do is that I make the one on top. And again, this is by choice. But I'm going to make the one on top negative. See? So I make the one up top negative, I have negative 3y minus z equals negative 600. So I multiply by negative 1 to absolutely everything. On the bottom, it stays the same. Now, if I were to add these two right now, oops, if I were to add these two right now, would one of my variables get eliminated? I would end up with 37y plus 11z equals some number see so i still have my both variables see so that's not good enough i need to keep going again here i multiplied by negative one now if i go ahead and multiply by 12 okay i can end up with uh negative 3 times 12 is negative 36 so i end up with negative 36y minus 12z equals negative 600 times 12 god dying bro Pull out your calculator, 600 times 12, 7,200, see? So this is negative 7,200. All of this on the bottom, we have 40y plus 12z equals 7,816. All right, so if I go ahead and add these two now, I'm going to see that I successfully eliminated one of my variables, see? 12z is going to disappear. So negative so I'm going to do this thing on the left side first. So it's negative 36 plus 40y is going to give me 4y. Negative 12z plus 12z is going to give me 0. So nothing, ¿cierto? And negative 7,200 plus 7,816 is going to give me 616. And so now I end up with just one variable. Ta-da! That is what we were going for the whole time. See? So now I have only y, I get y alone, dividing by 4, y equals whatever that is divided by 4. So 616 divided by 4 gives me 154. So y equals 154. And once you get one of them, the rest just kind of flows. See, because you can plug this in almost anywhere and it's going to work. So I can plug it in, let's say here, okay, which means that my x equals 2 times 154, which means that x equals 308. 
And now for my Z value, again, I can plug it in almost anywhere. In fact, I could even plug it in here. Uh, or I could plug, actually, just to show you, just to show you, I'm going to plug in X on my first one and Y as well on my first one. So my first one is going to look like this. I will have 308, which is X, see, X plus Y. X plus Y is 154 plus Z equals 600. So on this left side, I end up with, da, 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 I cannot math right now, 400, <laughs> 462. Yes, I choose to believe that, plus Z equals 600. Get Z alone, subtract both sides by 462. I end up with Z equals 138. So, bada bim, bada boom, look at that. I have my X value, I have my Y value, I have my Z value. And that is for number five. Again, for part A, you need to capitalize on what's, what type of equations you can do. See? Be very general. One of them can be amount, the other one can be price. Maybe in another scenario, there's another option. Dude, like, I have no idea, see? But you gotta think very categorically for part A and approach from there. For part B, you need to remember that your main tools are substitution and elimination. And if you ever get lost in what you're trying to do, because it can get messy, remember, you are trying to decrease the amount of variables. Decrease the amount of variables until you end up with just one. And from there, it, dude, it just flows. It just flows, see? So yeah, that is uh, number five.